OK, so we're going to have a look at this problem of finding the sum of the first thousand positive integers which don't contain a digit 9. So we start off with 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 8. Then we don't include 9, so we add 10, 11, and so on, up to 18. We skip 19, we include 20. And something quite interesting happens by the time you reach 88, because the next number after 88, 89, contains a 9. Then you're into the 90s, these all contain 9. So we have quite a big jump from 88 up to 100 in our sequence. And again, something quite similar happens, which is really interesting, at 888. because so our next number is 889. Then you're into the 890s. Then you're into the 900s. So we actually have to skip loads from 888 all the way up to 1,000. And here we're trying to find the sum of the first 1,000 positive integers, which don't contain 9s. And you can see here we've skipped loads of digits. So we're actually going to have to go beyond 1,000. It's not immediately clear exactly what our thousandth term in this sequence is going to be, so how far we need to go. So this is just the first thing that we'll try and answer to kind of get a handle on the problem. And there's a really nice sort of approach we can use here. So if I write x1 is 1, x2 is 2, just the first term in our sequence is 1, the second term in our sequence is 2. If we skip down to x8 is 8, then the ninth term in our sequence, x9, is 10. Then the next one, x10, is 11. If I just include a few more that we can point out as well, so by the time you get up to 88, you've had to skip 8 integers, so 88 is only the 80th number in your sequence, then x81 we skip all the way up to 100, and x82 is 101. And what we're really interested in, just to start off, is what is the value of x 1000? There's a really nice way of seeing this. Because if we have a look at what's going on here with the 8th term is 8, the ninth term is 10, and the 10th term is 11, if you've done any work using different base systems, you might spot that, okay, well, 8 in base 10, if you wanted to write this in base 9, it would still look like 8. 9 in base 10, if you wanted to convert this to base 9, it would now look like 1, 0 in base 9. So here the notation, the subscript is just saying what base we're working in. So here you've got 1, 9 and zero units to give you 9. Now if you want to write 10, convert this from base 10 into base 9, this will look like 1, 1 in base 9. 1, 9 and 1 unit. And this, you can see that this works really well even for our numbers later on in the sequence. So 80 in base 10, this is 8 lots of 9 plus 8 units gives you 80 in base 9. You can see there's the same structure again here. 1 in base 10 is the same as 1 in base 9. 2 in base 10 is the same as 2 in base 9. So if we want to find out what is a thousand, what is the a thousandth term in our sequence, we need to find what is a thousand in base 9 when you convert it from base 10. So a thousand in base 10. Let's try and convert this into base 9. So you need to think, okay, we'll probably include some 9 to the 0, our units, some 9 to the 1. 9 squared is only 81. So we need to include 9 cubed which is 729, in order for our number to be big enough. And we only want to include one lot of 9 cubed, otherwise it would be too big. And we think, how many 9 squares do we need? How many lots of 81 do we need? It turns out we need three more, so that gives us 243. And we think, how many lots of 9 do we need now to make this sum to 1,000? We need to include three, which gives us a 27. And if you work out this sum, how much have we got so far? We've actually got... 999, so there's just one unit left needed, so we just add one there. So just really quickly, we've seen there how to convert a thousand from base 10 into base 9. So you get 1331 three, in base 9. So that tells us that our thousandth term in the sequence is 1331. Three, and we're going to be able to take advantage of this structure. We've got this one-to-one -one correspondence between elements in our sequence and representations of integers base 9. So we'll use this to our advantage now to try and solve the problem of this sum. So we won't try and evaluate the sum all in one big go. What we'll do is we'll break it up into some slightly smaller, more manageable chunks. And our first chunk that we're breaking it up into is all the numbers from 1 up to 888. And the reason that I've done this is, basically if you have a look at all of these numbers, if you count 0 as one of your digits, they're basically all of the three digit combinations that you can make using the digits from 0 up to 8, so not including 9. Only we have missed the one, we call this x0 now, which is just equal to 0, 0, 0. This one 
has been missed out. But we can add this onto our sum and it won't actually make a difference. So now we have actually got all 729 three-digit combinations using the digits 0 to 8. So now if we want to find what is the sum from i equals 1 to 728, so all the way up to 888 of our terms, this is definitely the same as sum starting from i equals 0, because you're just adding 0. And the fact that we've got all of these combinations, we can really quite easily evaluate the sum using a very nice argument now. So if you think, what is the average value of your units column? What is the average value in your tens column? What's the average value in your hundreds column? Well, it's just going to be 0 plus 1 plus 2 all the way up to 8, and then divided by 9, because each of these appear equally often. This gives you 36 divided by 9, which is 4. So what we're saying is then, the average value from our units column is 4, the average value from our tens column is 4, and the average value for all these numbers in our hundreds column is also 4. So what we can do now is we can think we've got 729 of these numbers. So the sum of these is just going to be 729 multiplied by the average, which is 444. So note here, this is the same starting from 0 as it is starting from 1. So we've now calculated the sum from the first term all the way up to the 728th term, just using this nice averaging argument. And what we'll do next is we'll break this up into some nice chunks once again, we'll apply a similar sort of averaging argument, and we can add up all of our remaining chunks at the end. So the next chunk that we're going to look at now is just going from 1,000 all the way up to 1,288. And the reason that I've chosen this is that you can see that your 1s and your 10s columns, these just cycle through all the combinations using 0 to 8. And then it's even quite nice, your 100s column, this cycles through all the combinations just using 0, 1, or 2. And then your 1,000 columns, these are all just 1. So we'll be able to use a really simple sort of averaging argument here. So the mean of all of these numbers is just going to be, certainly it's 1 in the 1,000s column, then in our 100s column, we're getting a contribution of 1 on average between 0, 1, and 2. Then for your 10s and your zeros, these are cycling through all the digits from 0 up to 8. So as before, we get 4 and 4. So our mean of all these numbers is 1,144. So this is really nice because then we just need to multiply by how many there are. So we do the sum from i equals 729 up to 971 of our xi. This is just going to be, there are 243 of these because it's 81 times 3, and then we multiply this by the mean. So here we've calculated another substantial chunk here. We've got 243 times 1,144 as this part of the sum. So now what we'll do is we'll cycle through all the remaining ones, looking at the tens column, and eventually we'll get all the way up to 1,331. So now we're almost done, we just need to calculate the sum of all these remaining terms. What we'll do is we'll use an averaging argument on these ones in the red box. So the first thing we need to do is find the mean of these. And you can see that the mean in the thousands column is going to have 1. In the hundreds column it's definitely going to be 3. Then if we look at the tens column we've got zeros, ones and twos occurring equally often. So we get a contribution of 1 from the tens column. And then just like before from the ones column we get a contribution of 4, so the mean is 1,314. So this tells us then that the sum from i equals 972 all the way up to 998 in our sequence. This is going to be, think about how many there are, 9 plus 9 plus 9, so it's going to be 27 times 1314. Then all we need to do now to find the total sum is we add all of these different pieces. We also add 1,330, we add 1331. So let's just write this out, and I'll write it in a way as well so that we can kind of generalise this problem, because there is some really beautiful structure there as well, underneath. So the sum from i equals 1 up to 1,000 of our xi, this is equal to 729 times 444 plus 243 times 1,144 plus 27 times 1,314, then also plus 1,330 plus 1,331, when well, you just add these remaining two terms. Now if you put this into your calculator then, we get 639,807 as our final answer. And what I'll do is now, I'll just write this sum in a slightly different way to show how we can generalise this, then I'll really quickly at the end 
talk through the general problem. So we can also write this sum then as 729. I'm going to write this in a bit of a strange way as 1 times 729 is 9 cubed. And still multiply by 444. But then 243, where this really came from was 3 times 9 squared, 3 times 81. So 3 times 9 squared times 1144. Then we've got 27 is 3 times 9, or 3 times 9 to the power of 1. Multiply this by 1314. Then we've also got, here I'm going to write this really strange as 1 times 9 to the 0 times 1330. And then finally we just add the 1331 term at the end. And the reason I've written it like this is to make the structure a bit clearer what's going on, because you've got, remember that our thousandth term is 1331. And you see 1, 3, 3, 1. And this even kind of matches up with how we'd expect this to look, 1, 3, 3, 1 in base 9, because it's 1 times 9 cubed, 3 times 9 squared, 3 times 9 to the 1, and finally 1 times 9 to the 0. And we also have this extra term here. I think this reflects the fact that we've started the sum from 1 rather than from 0. What we'll do now is really quickly, we'll have a look at how to generalise this to find the sum up to n of all the terms in this sequence. So if you'd like, you can have a look at formally proving how this method works, but all I'll do here is just give a brief outline of how it works. So the very first thing you would do if you want to find the sum up to n, just as we did before, is you convert n from base 10, so I'll put it in brackets here, into base 9. So let's say that its representation in base 9 has maybe k plus 1 digits, and we'll label these as such. Okay, so what we'll do now is, for the total sum, I'll write it, splitting it up into chunks, just as we've done before. And what I'll do is I'll write each chunk on a separate line. So our first ones are corresponding to this 1 times 9 cubed times 0, 444. 4, 4. What we need to do here is you'll have, you think how many of these numbers are there going to be in our first chunk? There are going to be ak times 9 to the k of them. Then we think what is the average going to be? What is our mean contribution from each of the place values? So the first one is the hardest to deal with because it's actually it's ak but then minus 1 divided by 2. So the average all the way from 0 up to ak, the average contribution there is going to be ak minus 1 divided by 2. Then this is just followed by lots of 4s. And now, just to make it super clear, we're treating this, even though it came from a base 9 representation, we treat this as though it's in base 10. We add this. And there is, there's a slight abuse of notation here, that here our place value this isn't actually necessarily a whole number. So if you prefer, you could write this as ak minus 1 divided by 2 times 10 to the power of k, and then plus the rest of them are just 4 times 10 to the j, where j is ranging between 0 and k minus 1. So if you wanted a more sort of formal, less abusive notation way of writing it, you could write it like this. We'll have a look at a couple more terms. Our next one, how many terms are we going to have? We're going to have ak minus 1 times 9 to the k minus 1. And here our average contribution from the first column is actually just going to be ak, so that's nice. And then it's our ak minus 1, which we have to average. Then everything else is just followed by 4s. And again, we're treating this in base 10. The pattern sort of continues now. I'll just show you one more before going to the end. So it's ak minus 2 multiplied by 9 to the k minus 2. Then we multiply by the average is ak ak minus 1, then it's the ak minus 2, which gets averaged. And again, this is treated base 10. So then our final term, we've got a0 times 9 to the 0. And let's think what we've we got here. This is pretty much just our original representation, ak, ak minus 1. So we go all the way along to a1, but then instead of having a0, we are still taking some averages from the units column. So here it's a0 minus 1 over 2. Again, treated base 10, and again, kind of glossing over this slight abusive notation. Then the final thing that we need to do is we just need to add ak, ak minus 1, all the way along to a0, i.e. we're just adding kind of our base 9 representation of n, but treated as though it's in base 10. So this will give you the sum up to n of all the integers which don't contain the digit 9.